So, I want to talk to you a little bit about how we have not just um, experienced the last 50 years, but how we believe that those 50 years and our vision right now are laying a foundation for the next 50 years and 100 years and 150 years. It has taken many thousands of people and many thousands of prayers to bring the Episcopal Diocese of San Diego to where it is today. And as you've seen from the videos, we have had up times and we've had down times. Doing the work of Jesus Christ in this world is never easy. But at its best, it is good and joyful ministry that makes a soul deep difference to others. I think of priests and congregations who forgave and welcomed their arsonists. Priests who visited unaccompanied minor children in the convention center when they were housed here. Priests who preach the good news of Jesus Christ to veterans and refugees and thousands upon thousands of ordinary people who needed to know that God loves them. And I look around me and I say, our work is not done. We have 50 years behind us and we are just getting started. Unfortunately, the world around us is as troubled as ever. Our church is recovering from conflict and pandemic. There are serious issues in our communities to be faced, like a shortage of affordable housing. And there are always too many people who don't know the love of Christ and how Christ's calling brings meaning and purpose to our lives. Which is why I say we are only just getting started here in EDSD. We have a lot of work to do, but it is not burdensome work. Because when you follow Jesus, the work that he gives you to do is joy. Because Christ's work transforms lives. Christ's work is a joyful mission. So tonight, I want to invite all of you to join in that mission. Our 50 years of history is only the beginning. It is up to us to lay the foundation for the next 50 years. And that's what our Courageous Love strategic plan is all about. Launched in 2020, we didn't let the pandemic dishearten us from the mission that Jesus gave us to do. We started working on that mission, slowly at first, as the pandemic allowed, and now we're beginning to see some fruit being born. We have much more to do, and to do it, we will need your help. So tonight, we are announcing our Courageous Love Campaign for Mission. This is a campaign to support our strategic plan and the mission that God calls us to accomplish. The money won't go to buildings or structures or a diocesan endowment. Instead, it will go to our courageous love mission, growing the church, strengthening our congregations, and serving our neighbors. So let me tell you a little bit about what we would like to do in each of those categories. In growing the church, we believe that Christ's love makes a difference in people's lives, and Christ commands that we share that love. So we want to plant new churches in our densely populated area. We already have, as you've heard, two new churches beginning to take root in Oceanside and in Ocean Beach. And there are many, many more opportunities. We'd like to end the, the next five years with three to five new churches in areas currently underserved by the Episcopal Church, growing and thriving and reaching new people with the love of Christ. Also, we want to support our existing congregations in growing and reaching their communities through continuing to teach evangelism and community engagement. We want to support our congregations in starting new worship services to reach the amazing multicultural diversity of people in our area, as we are currently supporting St. Matthew's National City and Saints Peter and Paul in El Centro in starting Spanish language services. And we want to make disciples of the next generations, supporting your congregations and your leaders in their ministries with children and youth and starting two new campus ministries at UCSD and Cal State San Marcos to add to the one that we have begun at SDSU. Reaching new people of all ages and diversities with the love of Christ is a huge part of our Courageous Love mission. So that's the first category, growing our church. Second category, strengthening our congregations. 
We know that the heart of the work of the gospel happens in congregations as they do the daily work of worshiping and teaching the faith and loving and serving their neighbors. But coming out of the pandemic, some congregations are struggling and some are stable but could use a hand up for bold new visions. We want to be there for you with your bold visions. So we'd like to start with leadership development. We need to develop new leaders of younger generations and wider multicultural diversity, and to be able to support them through seminary or lay training programs so that they can do the things that God is calling them to do, to bring the gospel through the Episcopal Church to the many, many people in our communities. So we'd like to start a fund to support lay and ordained leadership development. We also want to be able to support congregations in their bold visions. We would like to establish a grant fund for evangelism and mission grants for congregations from ten dollars to $50,000 each to try bold new, new projects. Either to invite p new people into worship, for instance, with bicultural, uh, mul bi bilingual, all, all kinds of multicultural services, or to serve their neighbors in some way. All congregations would qualify for these grants without regard to the current division between parish and mission status. Third, we are starting a bold new mission real estate program. Many of our congregations are cash poor and asset rich. They have corners of unused land, and we live in an area where there is an acute crisis of affordable housing. We've already started working with congregations who are interested in using their excess real estate in new ways for mission. And we have, as we do this work, we have three values in mind. First, we want to provide long-term financial sustainability for the congregation. We want to help our congregations address the serious community issues facing our area, uh, such as the lack of affordable housing. And whatever we do on our property, we want it to be a mission opportunity for the congregation, allowing the church to interact with and offer ministry to the projects on our property. We note also that there is a clergy housing crisis. For us, as for many professions, teachers, healthcare workers, and so on, it is hard for our congregations to pay enough for our, our employees to live in this area. One of our goals is to find a way to solve our clergy housing crisis. And one of the things that we believe our diocese can truly support congregations in is providing some of the technical expertise in development and financing that most congregations don't have, and connecting them with the right people to discern what God is calling them to do and, to, and help them get the projects done. But expertise like that is expensive too. Um, too much for any congregation to afford on its own, which is why we want to support them. So, I'm pleased to announce tonight some great news. We just learned yesterday that our diocese has received a $350,000 grant from Trinity Wall Street. <laughs> the second richest church in all the world, and they are, they are partnering with us to, to help us with this mission real estate project, to fund part of this work, to provide technical expertise on land development and financing to our congregations. And our diocese would also like to have courageous love funds to contribute to this work, to support our congregations in this work, particularly with the clergy housing issue. So those two areas describe how we want to grow the church and strengthen our congregations. The third priority, which interrelates with the other two, is to serve our neighbors. The Mission Real Estate Project will serve our neighbors as we work with other faith and government leaders to solve the housing crisis and other crises of affordability in our region. The evangelism and mission grants will also serve our neighbors as we anticipate that many congregations will have big visions for congregational level service ministries that we can help to fund. 
And third, we have diocesan level projects that we would like to support that will serve our neighbors. In addition to existing diocesan service ministries that happen through our homeless services at the Episcopal Church Center, for instance, and others that happen through some of our affiliated institutions like uh, Episcopal Community Services, Refugee Net, and Vita Hoven, we have new opportunities before us to serve our neighbors. One such opportunity and vision that we have is to start a migrant shelter in Tijuana. We have a generous service-oriented Episcopalian from our diocese who owns a building there who has offered it to us for this use. And because the building already houses an orphanage, its Mexican licensing would allow a migrant shelter there for women and children. So our vision is to create a shelter for migrant women and children who, is, who have gotten as far as Tijuana and probably won't get any further, but who can't go home because they can't go back to whatever it was they were fleeing in their home, their home communities. And so they need a safe place to stay and they need job training so that they and their children can make a new life in Tijuana. We believe that we can make a vital difference in the lives of migrants who live difficult lives, who suffer difficult lives, just 30 minutes south of here, truly our neighbors in our own backyard. These are some of the neighbors that Jesus calls us to love. We're glad to be working jointly with our companion diocese of Western Mexico and Obispo Ricardo uh, Gomez Osnaya on this project along with the generous owner of the building and two other uh, nonprofits, including our own Episcopal affiliated Vita Hoven. This group of partners would all be supporters and uh, participants in this work. We are applying for some grant funding for this project and we hope also to have some diocesan funding to share with this mission of mercy and hope, which we are calling the Community of Light, Comunidad de Luz. We will be a beacon of light for our migrant neighbors. I need to thank the, the generous um, owners of the building for, for that offer. <laughs> So those are our priorities for this Courageous Love campaign. Grow our church, strengthen our congregations, and serve our neighbors. It is a bold vision. It is a vision that will take all the courage and love that we have. It is a vision of courageous love. And we invite you to share in this vision. The Episcopal Diocese of San Diego has been through a lot of ups and downs in the last 50 years. And coming out of a pandemic has felt like a downtime. It's certainly been a challenging time. But we believe that God is not finished with us yet. God has vital, essential ministry that he wants us to do. And it is time now for us to lay a foundation for the next 50 years, to reach out with hope and joy and love and care for our neighbors, to answer Christ's call to mission in confidence that whatever God calls us to do, God will make it possible, to pray without ceasing, worship without ceasing, love without ceasing, and to give so that that mission and vision can become a reality. My husband Tom and I have committed sacrificially to this campaign, and I'm, I'm, I'm inviting you now to consider it as well. Our total goal is $2.5 million, and we believe with your vision and support, we can do the things that God calls us to do. We can become the diocese that God envisions us becoming. We can live with courageous love. So please join me in answering God's call. I would like to invite Jason to come forward now and um, give you some specifics about this.
feel a little bit like Max Weinberg up here tonight. I want to start by first just saying thank you to all of you for being here this evening and thank you for all the ways that you already support the diocese. But I also invite you to remember that each and every one of us are here this evening because somebody else gave sacrificially, gave boldly and courageously so that we could be in this room this evening. So as we think about what lies ahead for the next 50 years, we're inviting you to consider making a three-year pledge to the Courageous Love Campaign. In your packet that you have with you this evening, about at the middle of this packet, you will find a QR code that gives you, that'll take you directly to uh, electronic pledging or giving, if you're ready to give to, tonight, um, or ready to make a pledge. If you're a little bit uh, old-fashioned and would like to do it the old-fashioned way, there's actually an envelope in there too, so that you can fill that out, uh, what your pledge is, and there will be a wooden box as you exit this evening that you can drop that pledge commitment in, whether that is a gift immediately and or uh, a, a commitment over the next three years. But more, most importantly, I invite you to pray about this. Maybe this is something that you want to take home with you this evening and pray with those that are in your household about what your gift will be to Courageous Love, what your gift will be to the next 50 years of the diocese, so that 50 years from now, there is somebody right now that couldn't even imagine being a part of the Episcopal Church, may not even know the good news that God loves them just as they are, will be in this cathedral, in this room, celebrating all that has happened in 50 years behind them. So take these with you. Pray, commit, and we will, uh, we, we're excited about what God has in store for us. So there's one other thing I want to just say before I pass it back, up, uh, pass it back to the bishop. At each of your table, tables is a centerpiece decoration there. Um, as a small, a small way of saying thank you, we invite everybody to take one of these home with them this evening. But here's the deal. You're going to have to either thumb wrestle, arm wrestle, or rock, paper, scissor, rock with the uh, rock, paper, scissor with those at your table to see who gets to take the, uh, the, the centerpiece home with you. But thank you for being here this evening, and thank you for being a part of the Courageous Love Campaign. I'm going to do a closing prayer and blessing, and then I believe we have um, a little bit more music, and uh, then we, we, are, we are very glad that you are here, and we bid you a good night once we finish with our music. Let us pray. O oh God, by your grace, you have called us in the Episcopal Diocese of San Diego to be a joyful, dedicated, visionary fellowship of faith. We thank you for the 50 years we have shared in ministry, and we ask for your blessing on the years and decades to come. May the vision of courageous love prosper through the vision and courage of the people of this diocese. Grant success to this campaign and to the vision and mission it will support. Bless the bishops gathered here, Catherine, Jim, Ricardo, Anne, and Susan. Bless our memories of our former bishops, Robert, Brinkley, and Gethin and bless all the clergy and people of our diocese. Grant that in the Diocese of San Diego, your word may be truly preached and truly heard, your sacraments faithfully administered and faithfully received. By your spirit, fashion our lives according to the example of your son, and grant that we may show the power of your love to all among whom we live, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now may the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.